Hello, uh, welcome. I'm sitting here with my dear, dear friend, Derek Jacobi, mm -hmm. whom I first worked with in... 1982. 82. 82. Playing Ariel to your Prospero yes. at the RSC. Upstaging me even then. <laughs> no, no, that was my terrible costume, I think. No, I don't think it was me. Yes, your assets were on show. Okay. No, it was... <laughs> Anyway, we're here to, to um, celebrate the Declaration of Reasonable Doubt and to, uh, we're patrons of the Declaration of Reasonable Doubt and indeed of the Shakespeare Authorship Coalition, the SAC, that created this wonderful document back in April 2007. Yeah. Uh, and it's done very well, so we wanted to um, congratulate the 3,300 signatories and, and give a little bit of news about uh, what's happened in the last seven or eight years. Now, the, the internet and uh, social media being what it is, I suspect that this uh, will be also being viewed by people who are not aware of the Declaration of Reasonable Doubt, are, are not aware of who Mark Rylance and Derek Jacobi <laughs> are, or that there uh, is a, even a question about the authorship yeah. of the Shakespeare works. Um, <clears throat> there may even be people watching who are very angry and upset uh, about uh, us having a, uh, a question about the attribution of the works of William Shakespeare to the man from Stratford-upon-Avon whose name was usually spelt Shakespeare or Shakespeare. Yes, never Shakespeare. Never Shakespeare, even in his will. And never hyphenated, even in his will. Um, I think in his will it was, there, there was, it was either spelt S-H-A-X-P-E-R-E -E or S-A-K-S. Yes. So even at the end of his extraordinary life, he didn't use the name that no. he that appears on the um, no. frontispieces of quartos and folios, where, where uh, after a certain date when his plays appear. So we, Derek and I, are, are part of a group of people. Uh, for those of you not aware of this question, who feel we have a reasonable doubt uh, that the man from Stratford wrote all of these works and that the name Shakespeare, William Shakespeare, is actually a pseudonym uh, for another writer. Now, back in 2007, how would you find out about this? There were a number of different people researching different candidates, and they would always open their books with a chapter saying why they doubted the man from Stratford. Yeah. So you would read this over and over again, many different books that then went on to argue a, a separate candidate. And we, a number of us were very impressed by a book by a, a wonderful American scholar, Diana Price, called Shakespeare's Unorthodox Biography, where Diana collects mostly orthodox scholarship yes. about the man from Stratford, a lot of stuff that's not included in their biographies of the man of Stratford because it's problematic. And she makes a very good case for why there is a question. But this is a this is a, a, a it's a wonderful book and I recommend it. But it's a little bit of a read. So we 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 thought we should have a simple um, declaration. Or John Shahan, the director of the SAC, thought we should make a simple declaration to explain to people why we thought it was reasonable to question and doubt yes. the attribution of the plays to the man from Stratford. And that's how the declaration of reasonable doubt came about. Yes, and yes. it was put yes. out on the internet. Uh, Derek and I launched it here in in uh, England in September 2007. At Chichester, yeah. In Chichester. Following your play. Following a play I'd written. And, uh, and, and it's been, since that time, it's been signed by <coughs> 3,300 people, which is, which is absolutely wonderful. Including many academics. That's right. Lawyers, That's professors. Right. Many with higher degrees. Yes. Um, and, and, um, I really highly recommend it uh, uh, as an explanation of, of uh, why we feel there is a, uh, a question. It doesn't s s uh, propose any other it, candidates. No, it no. just says why there is a question. And we inv we've invited criticism uh, from anyone. And indeed, yeah. we've had a lot and of criticism from the Shakespeare deal. Birthplace yeah. Trust. And, yes. and uh, James Shapiro has written a book, A Contested Will, in these last seven years, mentioning the Declaration. But none of these uh, critics have done much more than really try to attack our character. <coughs> exactly. We have both been um, 
called uh, MAD, um, <laughs> that we should both really be in a lunatic asylum. Uh, but th 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 this is the problem is that, you know, when you present something like this, which uh, does affect people intellectually, emotionally, um, it is, we, we are trying to uh, counter what we consider a myth, a legend, and they are very difficult to dislodge. And the normal reaction that um, anyone who offers the, this alternative gets is um, insult and vituperation. Mm -hmm. Never discussion. Mm. Never any interest, complete I find stonewall. people in the streets are quite interested oh, in this guy. Uh, yeah, it's yes, mostly just the academics it's, it's and the, the academics people who and, have published about Yes, and the, and the people, um, naturally, whose, whose reputations and livelihoods depend on yeah. the Stratford man. Yeah. You know, we, we are We've even been called un-Shakespearean un or anti-Shakespearean. How can we be un-Shakespearean? How can we be anti fiction I, I owe him They may not be quite a, a very good judge of character, <laughs> may they? <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> well, we, we've invited the criticism by putting the declaration out. It's called yes. a declaration. It's not a whisper. or It's a declaration mm -hmm. of, of something. So obviously, uh, we've put it out there. And we've listened to all the criticism uh, that, that's come, that's serious criticism. And, and we're happy to announce that we've made five minor adjustments to the declaration. Uh, we've adjusted two of the people whom we list as preeminent mm. doubters yes. in that there are a lot of very um, wonderful writers and thinkers through history, yes. or through the 400 years since Shakespeare yes. wrote, who have yeah. raised doubts. Mark Twain, uh, Walt Whitman, um, uh, Freud. Freud, a number mm. of different people. I think we, uh, Orson Welles, Chapman. Um, and two of those, their doubts were maybe we uh, slightly um, over-exaggerated their doubts and we've removed them and replaced them with two other um, em pre eminent people whose doubts are a little bit more strong. So that's one adjustment we've made. And then we've had to clarify three points um, which have received uh, uh, criticism. And so if you go to the... Um, doubtaboutwill.com, the, the site of the declaration, you'll see these, these clarifications. Yes. But I think yes. that's a wonderful record after eight years. Eight years, fantastic. When you think of, yes. it, it, yeah. of the yeah. mass of minds and people who think yes. about uh, Shakespeare and believe the man from Stratford mm. wrote the plays, yeah. they, they've only come back with these uh, five minor criticisms and, and we have adjusted, which is all we're asking people to do yes. if, uh, uh, if we, we, they we feel ask, we're reasonable. We are asking for a discussion. Yeah. Uh, we're putting a, um, an idea forward, a theory forward. We're not banging drums. We're not being violent about it. We're being, I hope, gracious about it. I hope uh, so. And, um, and it's fun. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's, it is fun. It's the best who done it in the world. I mean, you're right that there's a, there's, there's a deep emotional attachment to this author. Oh, for, yes. There was for me, and I expect and for, for me, you. Yes. I yes. think I, I mean, I was oh. taken to hear the plays from about age 12, I think, and then was acting them at age 16, playing Hamlet at 16. I skipped all the other parts. <laughs> <laughs> I've <laughs> but heard I, this about <laughs> but, but it was partly because yeah. I felt the person, the, the, the author was, was um, naming things in me that I hadn't found yeah. language uh, for, yes. that he was yes. in a way creating me, as Harold Bloom says. Yes. And so the attachment to the, the author is very deep and very intense. Deep. And for 28 very years, deep. I believed it was the man from Stratford. It was a, oh, it was a great yes. surprise to me yes. to, to find yes, I was... Yes, me too. Down. Me too. When, when did you first experience um, Shakespeare? I, well, my uh, first time was reading a book called, uh, by Charlton Ogburn, uh, The Mysterious Mr. Shakespeare, and a very thick 900-page volume. Wow. Um, and I had... It never crossed my mind that the man from Stratford uh, didn't write them, or there was a there was a problem with with his connection. Were with you the in place. your thirties when you came upon uh, this book? Or? I I was uh, eighty two. Uh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I was in my early forties. Wow. Yes. So yes. for about forty years, yes. you were a and I and I'd played Hamlet by that time. Yeah. Four hundred times, and I was still a believer then. Mm. Uh, well, when you read about Oxford, the connections between Oxford's life and Hamlet are so remarkable. Oh, it, absolutely it, remarkable. It, 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 absolutely remarkable. If he didn't and, write the plays, whoever wrote the plays well, must have known about his life, I've yes, always thought. Yes. And, and I've always thought, too, I mean, whoever it was, whoever, shall I say, they were, hmm. um, the amount of knowledge 
Um, genius, okay, but you can't have genius without knowledge mm. um, and the amount of knowledge and the, uh, the scale of it and the scope of his knowledge. I sometimes think, could one man know all that mm. uh, and be able to express all that quite naturally? That You know, he talks, uh, he talks like a lawyer. Mm. The, 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 all the legal... Um, metaphors mm. in, in the play. The technical uh, the, terms of uh, the many different professions that he gets right, yeah. that's what struck Mark yeah. Twain. And are used quite naturally. Mm. Uh, mm. You know, they're, they're not in inverted commas, mm. they're just flowing. But they, mm. it, Mark Twain was thought. working boats on the Mississippi River when he wrote his book uh, doubting the, the authorship of the, uh, doubting the, the man from Stratford, Stratford had written yes. the Shakespeare plays and one of his uh, one of his uh, one of the things that struck him was that it would be impossible for him to write about being a, a pilot on a boat on the Mississippi to have the right terminology and slang and uh, of that job. job yeah. You couldn't imagine it, no matter what genius you, no. you were. Obviously, Shakespeare, the author of the plays, was a genius, but he yeah. had to have learnt yeah, somehow all of this incredible uh, knowledge, uh, knowledge That's which, why I often which all the experts in each of the fields it, says he's right about. It, it, could it be more than one mind? Could it be an amalgam of minds? that somebody was um, was gathering. And it's certainly the case in modern film and television now, isn't it? You'll have a central genius, uh, a central kind what? of character, say West Wing, there's a central, yes. that I'd forget his name, who's leading the whole thing, and he has a lot of consultants uh, adding and bringing yeah. things, and he allows actors sometimes even to write scripts of episodes, but he makes the judgment about which one is right this and how yes. they... Yes. So, yes. so uh, I, I think I'm... That's a, that's a very interesting thing. But we're what? falling right away, you see, into the, <laughs> into the question of who did it if, if Mr. Shaxborough from Stratford didn't. And the Declaration is a, very, is a neutral document. Yes. And as yes. patrons of the Declaration, we stand by the, new, the, the first important thing to do being to make a, a neutral declaration of why there is a question. Because most people don't think there is a question or even unaware, yeah. as some of you may be, that there even is a question. Now, the other bit of news we wanted to give is that this, this is, a, as you can see, it's a very enlivening and enjoyable mystery. And, and it's not sealed and done. There's new oh, no. evidence coming forward all the time. And uh, in the last uh, eight years, we've been joined by the most wonderful man, Alexander Waugh. And he's made a few uh, very good discoveries, which if we'd had him when we made the initial declaration, we would have had in the initial yes. declaration. Yes. Yeah. We don't want to add things to a declaration that people have signed without them being able to check it. So we've made them as an addendum. But there, there are a couple of really wonderful new reasons to doubt that Alexander has found and we've drafted and attached to the declaration, which you can find uh, at the site. And then also a very, very um, kind of alarming record of the combat that's taken place between the Shakespeare Birthplace Trust, who obviously are there to defend the man from Stratford, um, and the SAC. And Alexander's written a very good report about the correspondence and the... Um, I, 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 I'm sad that I can't really call it a discussion. It's more of a, a slagging match, isn't yeah, it? Yes, unfortunately. That's gone on. But it's quite an interesting record of just how intense this debate can be. It, it, it came the, to a head, didn't it, with the challenge? There was a challenge, yes, um, to the, the Birthplace Trust, um, to have a sort of mock trial. Um, and the, I, I contributed financially to it. Um, People raised £40,000. £40,000. Um, to have this trial whereby um, though the doubters would put their case and the birth-based trust would put their case and if they won, if, the, if it was judged that they, their evidence outweighed our evidence, etc., then they would receive the forty thousand pounds. And this was for because, their charity. The, and this was because they had claimed that it was beyond beyond doubt. doubt. So yes. all we said was, right, if you if you claim that it's beyond doubt, then come to a courtroom and and prove that and it's beyond, beyond reasonable, reasonable doubt. doubt. Yes. Um, yes. And if you prove that, we'll give you forty thousand pounds to your charity. Yes. Now, as a registered charity, yeah. you would think they would. They would. Jump at that. Yeah, Almost but, you think or, it would be illegal for be them to turn it down. Obliged to do that, but oh, they right. turned it down. They, they did, wouldn't. Yeah. They wouldn't uh, take the challenge at all. We've been trying, and we will carry on trying, to really bring uh, the 
what I call the Stratfordians, I don't mean it in any disrespect, to the table to have a reasonable discussion. Derek yes. and I don't have the same image of who the author is, and, and no. many of the people uh, around the Stratfordians no. have no. many different ideas, but I have absolute yeah. respect for Derek's uh, perception of the author. Yes. As and I'm, it's mutual. And it's mutual, yeah. and, and yeah, I find absolutely. that all of us outside of orthodoxy are very happy to have discussions about this and to yes. share evidence yes. and question interpretations. Yeah. And as time goes on, we become more secure in in our beliefs mm. and um, as all the evidence is accumulated and it's happening more and more every every week it seems mm. um, we feel that we are on s surer ground and I suppose that makes us more relaxed in a way to be able to discuss it to be able to talk about it without yeah, no, slanging don't. each other off yes yes I don't. I, I have no intention to try to suppress or change another person's idea about who Shakespeare is. It's no, a very it's not an personal attack, thing. Is it? it's but not I ask the same respect from from um, though from 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 other people, I suppose, and yes. that this can be a much more enjoyable inquiry. It, it's not an important matter <laughs> compared to global warming no. or, or all <laughs> the important things to deal with. It's a historical question. Yes. I mean, I suppose yes. I, as a creative artist, interested in making modern theatre and wishing in my wildest dreams that this second Elizabethan period might make plays that were as great as that period. Yes, they were, yes. Shakespeare was, after all, created by a human being or a group of human beings. Can't we uh -huh. aim at that again? To me, it is important to know whether, for example, the sonnets are just a unemotional, unpersonal, technical exercise. Of the imagination. Uh, yeah, well, or whether they have personal I'm sure feelings they do. I'm in sure them. They I, do. I don't know any writer, any I'm artist, sure who do. can't help but involve their own life experience. Experience, personality, um, views of life. Um, every writer, surely, you can't writes help it, from, you? as like, actors. You, uh, you <laughs> You can't, you, cry on stage, you can't cry You can't just cry technically. No, no. You, you, or no, laugh exactly. technically. You, if you, if you're not moved or humoured by what's in the play, after maybe four hundred performances, you're not. Then you find something equivalent in your life, in your life. that moves you. Absolutely. And how? Uh, to, Absolutely. To, to, uh, to, if I'm wrong that about so this, great. and the Stratfordians are right that the sonnets are, you can't read anything biographical in them. They're just a technical exercise. I'd like to know that because then that's obviously how you write great that's sonnets. <laughs> It doesn't convince me. No, it doesn't convince and me. I, it do, and no, I, the poets I've be. talked to, it doesn't convince Cannot me be. about them. No. No. And, and what, what also is, is that, um, you know, we, we are accused, I choose the word um, pointedly, we are accused of um, trying to find biographical details, biographical similarities uh, between alternative people, alternative writers, um, and we are castigated for that. But the moment there is the smidgen <laughs> of, of a relationship to the man from Stratford, gosh, they're in there immediately. Yeah, yeah. But I have no problem, by the way, with the fantasy and the hypothesis and the imagination of writers like Shapiro and and um, say Stephen Greenblatt, who's a yes. marvelous writer. Th these are very, very yeah. intelligent and imaginative, creative people. I would, which is I would more than they if, allow us to be. I just ask the same from them. Yeah, that's yes. right. The that's same right. respect. And the, yeah. yes, yes. Um, the we we we're also doing this uh, around this marvelous four hundredth anniversary, mm -hmm. and uh, and of course it's true. Someone wrote these plays, even if we disagree about the name of that person, the, the, the person we all feel love for is the same person. Is, is, yes, you know, so, called Shakespeare. So yeah. the idea that, that we are hateful or disrespectful to Shakespeare because we think it's a different name, uh, we, we wanted to come on record and, and just say yes. we, we, that's not the case at all. No. And we both are no. taking part in these... Um, no. 400th anniversary celebrations. Derek, by yes. playing Mercutio, <laughs> the, yes. not only the oldest Mercutio, but oldest I suspect Mercutio. the finest that will ever uh, be. But we'll, it, we'll wait we'll and see. see. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm working at the Globe and doing sonnet walks mm -hmm. and many different mm -hmm. things, and uh, very happily and not, with no intention of like uh, standing up and saying you're all wrong and this is a shame or anything like that. Nothing of the sort. But curiously, um, 400 years ago, when he died, mm -hmm. nobody took any notice at all. They didn't. There, no. There was not even a letter no. recording his death. His death. Nothing. This is remarkable. I mean, you, you, 
you, when you think that um, when Burbage died, it said that the whole of London mourned. Now Burbage, Hemings, Condor, Hemings and Condor, who were clearly great friends, there are actors who are mentioned in Shakespeare's will, Shakespeare's will, I yes. should say. And, and uh, Beaumont, when he died, straight to Westminster Abbey. Francis Beaumont, who's a much less known yes. uh, writer, many of you may yes. not even be aware of his name, he collaborated with a man called Fletcher, and he died a month or so before Shakespeare and was buried immediately, a month before Shakespeare's death into Westminster Abbey. Ben Jonson, ben also Johnson. in 1637 when he dies, another great writer of the period, for those of you who don't know him, he goes straight into the Abbey and there are something like 33 eulogies written for him. Yes. Extraordinary amount. It was the practice at the time. It, absolutely. It was and the practice. That, that is why he's so suspicious, that uh, there wasn't anything, anything when, when Shakespeare died. Do you, do, I mean, do we, uh, do, do, are we to believe that he was less loved in his time than he is now? That he was a less remarkable person, less witty, less, yes. less compassionate, less wise, mm. le less profound and deep than the works suggest yes. he is? And that no, not to even his family, his neighbours in Stratford, no one no. seems to have even known he was a writer up in no. Stratford. I mean, the extraordinary thing too, his, his family were illiterate. His children were illiterate. His, it, it, we are told he went to school uh, at the grammar school. There is no um, documentary evidence to say that. None of his, he was the eldest son. None of his brothers went to school. What was the um, quote you, we heard this the, morning oh, about oh, his pedigree? a wonderful quote this morning. <laughs> because of the family of illiterate, he says, illiterate, 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 world's greatest writer, illiterate. <laughs> That's the family. I mean... I mean, miracles happen, <laughs> and, uh, and, and there's no doubt that there's genius involved in this. Yes, But uh, though yes. you can be born with genius, you can't be born with book learning and life and, experience. Yes, no. And that, that's where, for and, me, the question resides. And also the, the fact that the, the, the plays are set uh, not just in England. Whoever wrote them um, had an intimate knowledge of Italy. Mm. France, mm. the noble, noble houses of, of France and Italy. Mm. Um, he must have journeyed. He must have. He couldn't have got all this knowledge talking to a couple of sailors in the pub. <laughs> I mean, it, surely. Um, <laughs> it's no disrespect to Shakespeare, <laughs> but he couldn't. His knowledge of, of um, music, medicine, mathematics, horticulture, heraldry, um, military knowledge, naval knowledge, mm. I mean, mm. just law, mm. philosophy, mm. you name it, he, he had it at his fingertips, mm. or they did. Mm. We don't know. And he but goes to sort... I mean, the, the, the response to this is that he learnt all this in the grammar school. Now, to be strict, strict. as, as we, uh, people are very strict with us about yes. our theories, there is, actually is no record that he attended grammar school. The records of the years he attended our uh, loss. Our loss. And also, um, he, he wouldn't have gone to the grammar school until the age of seven, seven to 13. Um, and in order to get into the school, he had to be able to read and write. They didn't teach him to read and write. They taught him Latin and Greek mm. or whatever. But they didn't teach him to read. Who taught him? His, his family were illiterate. Who taught him? And they didn't teach him continental languages. And this is a no. man for, to, who went to um, sources that were in uh, French, Italian, Spanish, yeah. Greek, Latin, he, uh, Not before they're translated, translated into yeah. English and yeah. finds the sources for his plays in those things. So he, he is remarkably, remarkably educated. Now, one of the things that's aimed at us, and I think it's worth addressing here, oh, is yes. that we are snobs. Yes. And we can't believe a common man uh, wrote these plays, yes. which is not the case at all, nor no. is it the case of no. any of the authorship skeptics that I know. No. Uh, the evidence is clear. Christopher Marlowe, a genius writer, he's noticed in grammar school by the university educated teacher who do uh, most of these schools, I think the one in Stratford too, had a university educated no. teacher. He's noticed and he's promoted up to uh, Oxford University, isn't he? Yes. And where he gains the education that's clear in his plays. I think he's, I think he's now, Cambridge. Well, Cambridge, Cambridge, you're right, Cambridge. Yeah. Um, so he, yeah, you're a Cambridge man, aren't you? Yeah. Very sharp. <laughs> 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 and um, so there's clear evidence that a common man can write brilliant plays as Marlowe did. That's not the question uh, at Absolutely all. Absolutely not. But I've often wondered, uh, why did this tutor in the Stratford School with this young, incredible genius, genius not do the same thing for him that they did no, for Marlowe. If, if, he, if indeed he was there. If indeed he was yes. there. Yes. It's, 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 it, it's so unfair, this, this thing about um, being a snob. 
Um, no. I mean, neither, neither of us are. No, you we really we need both to find... come from Gore Blimey. I certainly do. Yes, me so, too. So what is... I don't know. I don't get it. I really don't get it. And I think the it's... part is because there's so much learning in the plays about aristocratic yes, pastimes yeah, yes, and, and yes, most of the characters yes. are involved in aristocratic behaviour. And there's, yes. there are no plays about Stratford, no, no, indi no. Or any indication of a Warwickshire dialect or Warwickshire uh, mm. lifestyle. Uh, nearly all the plays are concerned with kings and princes yeah. and queens and princesses. And so naturally, yes, some and of the candidates we look to are people who were in that who, world who knew that or world. aware of that world. Yes, yes. So to conclude, um, we got carried away with it. It's such an enjoyable <laughs> topic is, to talk yes. about. Yeah. Um, to, to conclude, yeah. I just wanted to clarify, we've been using the name Shakespeare and Shakespeare or yeah. Shakespeare to try and separate for just reasons of discussion the author, Shakespeare, Shake hyphen Spear, William Shakespeare, the author of the plays and poems. And, and the, the man who those plays and poems are attributed to seven years after his death, William Shakespeare of Stratford-upon-Avon, who is the, I suppose, preeminent candidate to be the author. And uh, we separate these two so that we can discuss, discuss other candidates who, um, who we feel yes. are, are also possible candidates for the authorship of the William Shakespeare plays. I hope that's clear. Um, he, we don't deny that uh, a man, William Shakespeare, from Stratford-upon-Avon existed. Of course he existed. And, 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 and I feel he, he may have written the plays. I think that's also, we're not yes. saying that's not impossible. But we'd um, like to talk about it. But we'd like to talk <laughs> about it. He may have collaborated. He may have just been paid to do the very brave thing of being the, the front man, as say um, Dalton Trumbo had to find during the McCarthy years, mm. uh, this wonderful film that just came out r recently, that uh, in times of danger, so writers was, have often yes. had to find someone else to be the, yes. uh, the front man. Um, and this was, this was talked about in the Elizabethan period, reported that, that uh, noblemen were doing this. So he may have done that. Even if he did that, that was a very brave thing to do. Yes. Um, so we honour and respect him as having a very important role uh, and, and providing a very, very beautiful authorship story, yes. uh, true or not. Um, so the, to end, then, I would encourage you <laughs> to, uh, to have a look at the Declaration of Reasonable right. Doubt. Uh, it's, it's a, I believe it's going to be a historic document. Um, if, if anything in it is proved to be wrong or, 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 or uh, solved, then we will adjust it. So we're going to keep it. It's a living document, as is the mystery. You can find it at doubtaboutwill.org. Uh, and if you, if you do sign it, you'll be joining 3, 000, over 3,000 people who've signed it, including 1,200 people with advanced degrees. Um, and, and many other wonderful people. If you don't feel you can sign it, then we'd certainly love to hear why. Uh, and you can uh, send your questions, I think, to the Shakespeare Authorship Coalition. Um, but please believe us, and I hope we've made it clear that we, we don't mean any uh, negative disrespect no. to uh, the man from Stratford or the author Shakespeare, whether they are together or separate nor to any of those wonderful people who um, believe in that and who are doing a lot of excellent uh, work inquiring uh, about both characters. I can't put it better than that. Really? No. <laughs> no. So thanks very much for listening. Thank you. Mm -hmm.